I'm Cape Joel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we are taking a closer look at Superman issue number 37. Why is John Kent the Superboy suddenly the focus of so much attention? Well, let's hop on in together and find out. So, this Superman story opens up in the most unlikely of places, mainly Wayne Manor. Bruce is chilling out for the night, reading a book, you know, that sort of thing. When all of a sudden he's taken aback by an intruder smashing through his study window. Window. Ah, I get it, making a reference to the famous bat that flew through the window, I can dig it. This guy, if you've been reading the current run of Detective Comics, you'll know is an evil Tim Drake from the alternate Titans of Tomorrow future. In that story, he had tried to kill Batwoman and quote-unquote save the Bat family from its ultimate downfall, but he was defeated by the current timeline Tim Drake. After his defeat too, he was seemingly sucked up by hypertime and disappeared, only now he's back again and twice as angry. He and Bruce have themselves a a knockdown drag out brawl all throughout the manor, smashing up just about everything that comes in their path, which you know makes me feel bad for poor Alfred, who you just know is gonna have to clean up this mess. Eventually, Evil Tim is able to get the upper hand on Batman by making use of a gun, the one thing that he's willing to do that he knows his alternate timeline mentor won't. But the plan, as we discover, isn't to kill Batman or even hurt him. No, that's incidental. What Evil Tim wanted was actually kept deep in the bowels of the Batcave, and that is Batman. Batman's own paranoid contingency policies. Aw oh, man, we're getting all Tower of Babel up in here. Evil Tim wants to get his hands on something that'll allow him to kill a Kryptonian. And hey, speaking of Kryptonians, and I was, from there we transition on over to Superman. In a nice bit of continuity, he's trying to repair the ice statues of his parents that were destroyed in his battle with Mr. Oz. The fortress security alarms go off, and before you know it, the Man of Steel is duking it out with this darker, twisted Dark Knight from an alternate timeline. Tim hilariously thought far enough in advance to try and modulate his voice so Superman didn't know who he was up against, but Superman quickly deals with that. I mean, even if he didn't, the using a gun is a pretty dead giveaway that this isn't the real Batman. What's even more interesting is that Superman apparently read Batman's file on Evil Tim and as such basically knows what his deal is, which is why he's further confused why he would be attacking him right now of all people. When before his hate boner seemed to be pointed solely at Batman and the Bat family. Well, here's the thing. You see, Evil Tim didn't get back to this dimension on his own. He says before he was working to rectify his own timeline, but now he's working for someone else to try and fix something much bigger. But before he can carry out his real plan, though, he's going to have to make sure Superman and Batman can't get involved. Superman is further shocked to discover that Tim can pilot his Kryptonian war mech. It seems that Superman in Tim's timeline actually taught him a little Kryptonian before his untimely death. Rightly so, the big blue boy scout is getting pretty ticked off. He's not used to getting bounced around like this, especially not on his own home turf. It's this rage that evil Tim was hoping for because Superman recklessly barrels forward and ends up stepping directly into a red sun trap. Again, this Tim might be evil, but he's also complicated and doesn't want to hurt anybody, let alone Superman who saves so many lives. He says, though, that he's going to keep him under glass for the time being while he deals with his real target, Superman's son, John Kent, who he aims to kill in order to save his future. So that was Superman number 37, everybody, and overall it gets this crossover storyline off to a great start. Evil Tim is such a wonderfully complex and layered villain. I love that he's sharing the love around, not just in the Batman books, but coming over here to the Superman book as well. This story also continues to tease and imply that they might finally answer the question of what happened to Connor Kent, the Superboy. Keep in mind, Evil Tim remembers his Connor from his timeline, but no one else does. And I mean, really, if that's not enough to get you in and get you on board, Amenez is just killing it on art right now. That fight scene, Bruce and Shadows, just loved it. Overall, I'd give this one an 8 out of 10, and be sure to keep your eyes peeled to the channel because I'll be covering Super Sons, the second part of this storyline, very soon. So that's Superman. I hope you dug it in. As always, why not follow me on Twitter so you know exactly what I'm doing next. And hey, with the holiday season upon us, it's still not late to do some last-minute shopping. If you want to get some comic book trades, either for yourself or someone else, please use my book depository link down in the description. Not only will you save a bundle and not have to pay for shipping, but whenever you buy using my special link down in the description, you're helping me out, and it's always my appreciated. So until next time, everyone, this has been Gabe Joel. Thank you so much for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again later. Bye-bye.